my start with the museum was when uh, the collection moved to St. Petersburg and I was asked along with a very lovely friend of mine, um, Marty Wallace, to chair, chair the co-chair the opening. So I, I go back even further than the time I became the director, which was until 90, 1991. I came uh, to Florida in 73 to open the first Robinsons, which was the name of the store. As a result, became very involved in the arts. I, then I was asked to be on the board uh, of, the, of this or whatever organization. I didn't go on every board, certainly, but I did go on a couple of them, primarily the Florida Orchestra. I was asked to chair the opening uh, of the Dolly because Jack Lake, who is, was the uh, publisher of the St. Petersburg Times, and he was one of the four gentlemen who were really responsible for, for getting the collection here. Um, he came to visit me and asked me to co-chair this uh, opening. And he, the, re the reason he said, I like the way you op I like the way you've opened your stores, because we opened by then we had opened probably seven or eight stores, and and we always did it with a flair and a and a uh, we always had a, a event that was uh, we gave the proceeds turns out to an arts organization. So I was invited to uh, Jim Healy's office, and Jim was the head of a major company here and uh, very involved along with Jack in this, in this museum. And he invited me to come up to, he invited uh, Marty Wallace and I to come up and meet the Morrises. Marty and I sat on one end, one end of the room and Eleanor and Wren sat over here and we just stared at each other and we knew damn good and well who they were and they knew who we were, but there was no conversation. And I think at that time the Morrises were very skeptical. They've made this deal to move the collection here, but I, I don't, they didn't really know what they were getting into, I don't think. Particularly the, the community. Uh, was the community gonna accept them? Were they being taken uh, by this uh, city and the state? Uh, they, they really didn't know, and so they were very wary of, I think, what they were getting into. We, we met several times. They were still living in Cleveland when we were preparing the opening. In the, in the nine months that we had to get this thing ready, finally they, were, they came down for the opening. I didn't really see them much after the opening. Uh, Mr. Uh, Morris gave me a wonderful catalog that he printed of Dolly's works, signed by him, which is a real treasure of mine. I did keep in touch with them a little bit because when they'd come to town, um, somehow I'd know it or they'd call me or something. And Mrs. Morris loved theater and she loved music, but uh, I was very involved at the time at the, with the Oslo Theater in Sarasota. And uh, I would take her, take them down to the Oslo and see a play. And <laughs> usually, usually he fought the whole thing, but, uh, but went along with it because she liked it. Uh, so we just got to be friends that way. And then about a year later, we opened in, in um, 82 and 84, right? so it was two years later, uh, out, of the, out of the blue, he, he asked me to come on the board. And I was the, actually, I'm very proud to be the first board member of the, of the museum outside of this initial group of people. Uh, it was the five gentlemen and the three Morrises, Mr. and Mrs. Morris and their son. So they, Mr. Morris decided to open the board up, and um, so he, he asked me to come on the board. I don't think we, the board members were uh, given much to do, frankly. I think we were, uh, Mr. Morris didn't even want a board, frankly. He said to me several times uh, after I became the director, Executive Director, Marshall, why do we have to have a board? Um, he really saw no use for the board because he was running the thing. He was going to make the decisions. Um, at least he felt that way at, at that time. This was his collection and he wasn't going to let loose of it. Eventually he, he did, but initially he was very yelled tight. So board being a board member wasn't very challenging. It wasn't very interesting. We'd just go in and he'd tell stories and you know about what was what something about Dolly. During that period while I was on the board, um, we had lo we lost our second executive director, he had left to take another job somewhere else, and and I was appointed a one man search committee. 
to replace the executive director. He didn't want anybody that had any art experience because he didn't want anybody in, as a director who, who knew anything about Dolly or had any opinions about Dolly because he, had, he held all the opinions about Dolly. So he basically asked me what, if I would come over and help them, uh, help the museum as the, he put it, the co-director. And Joan would be the co a co-director in charge of the collection and in charge of facilities, I believe. I was in charge, I was co-director in charge of development and marketing. When, when the museum opened in 1982, it was, you walked into the gallery and it was one big room, 9,000 square feet room, of just nothing, of walls. And on the walls were scattered about where the, where the, was the collection. But only part of it because uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't have gotten the whole thing. Not too exciting. Had some posts in the way. But that's what he wanted. I mean, he didn't want anything else. He, uh, he, that's how he wanted it laid out. He kept telling me, Marshall, after I got we're a small museum. Uh, we don't have to grow. Uh, he wanted to keep it that way. And I had different ideas. And so I went to um, a man, a very well-known gentleman at the Met. So he said, well, we have a guy downstairs. Uh, working for the Met, and he he does he designs our exhibitions, but we allow him to freelance. So, boom! I went down to see this guy, and he came to Florida, of course, and spent a couple days. And he went back, and he came back a couple weeks later with with his plan, and his plan was to add walls within this huge space, and. What that did is something like we could show our collection plus our whole collection, which is 92 paintings at one time. We couldn't do that before. And everybody liked it, and, and, and it worked. And we were able to do both our sh show, our artwork, and, and this show of the young Dolly. Except I, someone told me, he never said it to me, but he once no, I think he said it. Maybe he did say it in front of me, as I now as I recall, because he would say anything to anybody. He he referred to that move of adding those walls as when Marshall crapped up the museum. Uh, I felt at the time that the, the world was treating Dali as kind of a fool, and so my inclination was to stop that and make our museum a serious museum. Uh, that we're not going to tout his his craziness, you know, his walking around with an oscillate in New York City and uh, scaring people and uh, jumping out of the Dumbanwa teller window and all that sort of stuff was crazy. But that's what that's what publicity is, and that's what the publicity world does. But I wanted to stay away from that, and I, I wanted I didn't like people making fun of Dolly, frankly. So I think I did a favor for Dolly. Um, because, it, because at the end of my 11 years there, I think he began to get a great deal of respect. I think now people are really realizing he was a great artist and let's treat him like that. It was impressed upon me that Mr. Morris didn't like to lend any of the paintings that we owned that, he, in fact, he was just, he would get crazy if you even mention it. Uh, one summer I was up in uh, a, a place called the um, Berkshire Mountains in, in the Tanglewood, which is the home of the Boston Symphony in the summer. And I stopped in Hartford on the way up. They have a couple of interesting dollies, and dollies, uh, I think they were the first museum to buy a dolly in this country. So I, th I was interested to see if we could maybe get some of those dollies to exhibit in our museum to sort of vary what we, had, what we were showing. We, we were showing the same things. But anyway, this director uh, said, well, 
uh, are you accredited, number one, and, and we weren't. And he said, uh, well, nobody's going to lend to you unless, you're accredited, unless your museum is accredited. And uh, we had to be part of the we had to be part of the community, the art community. We, we needed to have someone on staff who had a PhD in art history. Finally, I got a, a, a letter from a, a young man who was living in England, and he happened to have been visiting the Miro Museum. It's called the Miro Foundation in Barcelona. And he picked up a copy of a publication published by the American Museum Association, and in that publication was a one ad uh, uh, asking, you know, I was, I, 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 we ran an ad in that publication. This man's name is uh, Dr. William Jeffett. He was visiting the cur cur director, I guess, of the Miro, and he picked up the, this paper and saw that the Dali Museum was looking for a curator. And so we arranged, I think, the, we arranged to meet in London. I was, uh, but eventually he came and, uh, uh, and he's done some terrific things for the museum. Uh, his knowledge, he's, he's, he's a brilliant young man and um, hard worker and, and knows his stuff. I mean, he knows uh, because of his ability to speak French, Spanish, and Catalonian, and probably a couple others that I don't even know about. Um, make him a very valuable uh, museum curator. There was a, a group of people putting together an exhibition in London at, at a place called the Hayward Gallery. The show was about early Dali works, and so we have a good we have a good selection of those. And so they kept calling. Either the curator would call or someone would call who involved with it and want to come over and talk to us. And I kept saying, "We, we don't lend. You're wasting your time." So I finally went to Eleanor and uh, said, you know, Eleanor, I keep hearing from these, these people, and did I just shut them down, or should we just forget about it, or walk away from the idea, or what? And she said, um, well, what do you think, Marshall? And I said, well, I'm, I'm a marketing person. That's what I've done all my life, I guess, professional life. And this could be, this is the best way in the world to market our collection or to market this museum. We couldn't pick a better, uh, you know, thing to do. And she said, all right, let me, let me talk to Ren. And um, so a few days later, she called me back and she said, well, he's agreed. And so I called the people in London and I said, come on over. And we met in uh, Mr. Morris's office, I believe. Finally, Mr. Morris said, well, it's up to Marshall, which I took as meaning that he, he didn't want to take responsibility. If something had happened to the pictures, um, he could blame me. He could say that, you know, Marshall, well, Marshall agreed to it. I got. Uh, went to the organizers of the, of the, of the, of the uh, exhibition and said, what about us? Um, and so they finagled um, the loans because not all the lenders wanted to lend, wanted to keep their paintings out as long. They, you know, people tend to want their things back and I don't blame them. But we, we were able to put together a substantial show out of that, including our work. Um, so that's really the first time that we, we, showed, we showed Dali other than our collection. From there, we went on to bigger and bigger and better things. What I did basically is to see the potential of what the store could bring. Um, we only occupied one half of the lobby space. And even in that space, that small space, they were doing phenomenal business. Um, so I went to the Morrises. The first thing I did was go to the Morrises and say, can we expand and use all of the lobby for the store? And they had no problem with that. Uh, it, it turned out to be a very successful operation. It still is, I'm sure. 
uh, when back when I was there, it was I used to look at the museum store uh, totals on business, uh, and we were ranked like 14th in the country because we were we were doing two million dollars a year, and so that's uh, for that size of store and that kind of operation, that's phenomenal. We'd keep the expenses down and we'd make a lot of money because of that store, primarily, and because of attendance. Attendance kept cre creeping up. And so at the end of the year, the board decided that they, with the money that they ended up with, if there was a profit, that money that we made every year, and I don't want to give it half to accessions and half to an endowment. I've been told by other people that like Tom James, who thought I was, you know, excellent at getting along with Rand, and I really did, and that was mattered. That mattered because he, he it was his collection, and we didn't want to hurt him. We didn't want to, um, you know, offend him by doing something he didn't want. There, they were marvelous people. I'm going to start crying if I talk about it much longer because they were, um, they were just really wonderful people to me. I just knew how to make that thing click, and I think we had the right people and um, the right couple, Mr. and Mrs. Morris, and the right collection to make it all work. And I think that I could see the difference in when I started and when I left.